Prime Radio. Today we have Mitchie Brusco, my man. Um, I haven't seen you in a while, man. The last time I saw you, we were on your podcast. Yep. And that was so much fun. That was awesome. You know, your mom sent me a an amazing note. I had I, no I, idea. I, I, you want that? No. And she sent me a note, and and uh, and it came in the mail. And Bonnie hands me a she uh, hands me some mail. She goes, "This is for you." And I I never get those little cards. Like you know, it's like a it's a something personal. Yeah. So I open it up, and I'm I'm reading it, and I'm completely lost reading it. And so I had to skip to the end, and and it was your your mom's your mom's signature. And it was Brusco. I'm like, I guess Mitchie's mom. And Coley's mom. Wow. So I went back and I started reading it and she was just like, just the ama- amazing stuff. Just thanks for loving my kids. And thanks for, you know, spending t- as much, much time as you spend with Coley and stuff like, which is your sister yep. who yep. used to work, work, work here at, at this facility. And it's just an amazing, you're just an amazing family. And you guys have been through a lot of stuff. And, but in that you have had quite the amazing Amazing throwdown of of a career, Mitchy Brusco, uh, fourteen X Gold X Games medals. Yeah, um, you have the first nine hundred on the Mega Ramp in skateboard. You have the first ten eighty in X Games. Um, the first twelve sixty ever. First and only, actually. First and only. Yeah, that was the one. If you look it up on YouTube, that is that's the one the that's only been one. done um let's see you have a thousand skydives and your d license and uh your new website which is skate iq which is what we just we just had up a minute ago which uh you teach all teach all levels of skating and uh and you guys go past skating you kind of get into kind of the deeper levels of life as well and and making sure that you know the skaters are come out this come out of their interaction with you a little bit more well-rounded than they went in um so welcome thank and you thank you for having me it's a yeah. beautiful studio yeah this is yeah, cool i'm impressed huh? this is i'm cool. impressed this stuff isn't easy to put yeah. together it's all zach it's all zach <laughs> I, I i take very little credit i walk in here and i just i sit down sometimes just look around and i'm like uh oh, walls cool oh soundproofing uh, i think the only thing i can really take credit for is i think the lights around the top and around the bottom. I think that's about all that I actually did. Zach you brought the blue in. I here. brought the blue in here. Zach did everything else. Like he we were we were texting this weekend. Uh said so money wasn't an issue. What cameras do we want? And he's like sending me a bunch a series of letters and numbers. And uh I have no idea what that means. But uh yeah, he's he's uh he's he's the brains behind the operation for sure. As someone who's ran a a podcast before, the microphones. Like people at home don't know about the microphones, man. As soon as I saw those, I was like, okay, we're in a, we're in a good room right now. Right. Yeah. 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 These, these things are legit. We even, I mean, I think we have three different setups for microphones for doing three. Like we can be outside. Audio is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I hear him in here editing and I hear the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And he's trying to clean up audio <laughs> and stuff. It's yeah. It, Cause my office is just across the hall and this is kind of his lane, but, um, but yeah, so, so tell me about what has happened with you since the last time that we were together. So the last time we were together on your podcast, we talked a lot about uh, the mental health issues yeah. that are happening. Um, yes. and, and that, really got my attention and we had a blast on that it was such a good day that's really stuck with me you know when when you one of the conversations that we had was how a lot of people don't have anyone and that podcast i didn't know it at the time but that was one of the great ways for me i have more people now because we had those one hour two hour three hour conversations where we're really focused and we're really talking you know you and I were talking about how we have friends to go to. And then all of a sudden we, we kind of, we could go to each other after that. And that, mm-hmm. so that was just such a, such a good day. Yeah, it was amazing. That I really enjoyed that. Um, and what's been going on ever since, I think something that inspired me to start the podcast, which I didn't know it at the time was, you know, I'm in this, I've been skating professionally since I was like 12 or 13, been doing it on like a public stage, you know, I was on the today show when I was five. So public stage since the beginning. And I think that podcast was actually the first step of making it less about me. 
Yeah. I didn't understand that that's what was going on, but now since that since that podcast started and now starting this coaching company with with my business partner Tyler, um, and as we build that brand, we just realized like, hey, like businesses aren't ran to be famous. You know, they're ran in the shadows, and you you take your leads and you follow up and you help people, and uh, you know it's been a it's been a bit of a, a ego journey to a build a business and to make it about everything else besides you and it's been just like from starting from the podcast to to where i am now has been like a, a long couple of years and a, and a lot of like really good diligent work and yeah so when you're out in public how often does it happen where somebody is somebody they're, they're at a table next to you at a restaurant or you're you're just walking down a boardwalk or somewhere and somebody says are you are you Mitchie Brusco? Does that happen? There's it comes in seasons. I mean, right after X Games, for sure. I mean, yeah. especially in in the culture in Carlsbad and San Diego in LA. You know, the the Seattle airport where I grew up. Mm. You know, right after those big contests. You know, there were a couple times where I had like I had the number one spot on ESPN Top Ten, and then yeah, then it happened yeah. everywhere for like a week. Um, but it, it does seem to happen locally kids, my age at the smoothie shop, someone that works behind the counter, you know, after I swipe my card, they see my name and then they have the confidence to be like, Hey, I like what you're doing, you know? And it's very brief That's like cool. that, but you know, nothing yeah, insane. You, you're, you're, you're a big deal. And uh, a lot of people don't realize how big of a deal you are in that skate world. When I first met you. Um, you were Mitchie Brusco. Yep. And that's how I knew you. I was just, you, you were a fun jumper and, and, uh, you walked by me when I was with, um, with Sammy mm -hmm. and Sammy, who's 19 now at the time, he was probably, who he was probably not jumping yet. Yeah. 13, 14. 13, yeah. Yeah. And he's, he holds me. He's like, dad, do you know who that is? I said, yes, Mitchie. It's like no, but do you know who he is? <laughs> and I said it's Mitchy. Like, like he's like, no, dude, he's like one of the best skateboarders in the world. And uh, and I turned around, I looked as you were walking away again. I was just like him, <laughs> and just, curly haired, like all messy. You were just going, like, dude, just yeah. kind of walking along. I was like, seriously? And Sam's like, yeah, like he's a big deal. And so, um, and 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 again, you know, it's like here I am with this big thing I got to run and, and staff and, you know, first world problems like I'm trying to solve, you know, but then watching you with all of our other staff and watching it, you know, I was just like, he handles himself differently because at the time it's like you were young as well, but when you see somebody that was your age then and how they handled themselves, it didn't, it didn't compute with me because in my mind, I see a skater or I, someone who comes from that, you know, you just kind of think, Oh, wild child out there breaking laws, skating where it says, don't skate. He's going to be skating there. But, um, but you're, you're, you're different. And the culture that you come from is not from that. You come from a culture of like, uh, okay, so here we're going to skate. We're, uh, we're going to treat people with respect and honor. We're going to be, and, and I've always, recognize that about you and even my boys said um mitchy's bit mitchy's different mitchy's different you were a role model to my kids before i even knew who you were yeah, and that's cool i thought that yeah, was always cool. something really really unique and special and so i always just gravitated towards you in that area you know and when uh when you when you uh called me to go and be on your podcast i wasn't gonna pass that up you know and now that this is in its infant style state now we're starting this one up i was just like man he's got to be one of our first one of our first guys on i appreciate here. But, that i was so happy when you invited me yeah no, this, is, this, is, this is gonna be fun so let me ask you about this so and this is something i've always wanted wanted to know is and you get asked this all the time. I know this. I know this. And it's rule number one of when you're talking to people who have done things, ask questions that they've never been asked before. That's how you engage them. Yep. But yep. man, when, no yes or no questions. Yeah. Things they haven't heard before. <laughs> <laughs> but when you are doing a move that is so big that has never been done before in a sport, and you know that going into the trick, 
right? Mm -hmm. Like I am about to attempt something that has never before been attempted. Let's go past skating in human history. No one has ever been under the subject of gravity with a piece of wood with wheels on it in their hand. And I am going to go ahead and I'm going to spin it up that many times. What do you do? What is your mental prep going, going into that moment? You know, one of the one of the things that I really focus on with coaching with some of the higher level skaters that I work with, um, sometimes I just need to tell them that uh, you're somebody who can already do this trick, you know, just because you haven't done it yet. You need to tell yourself and step into the shoes of someone who can do this. Mm. And then, it, you know, because you're right there. And so the only thing missing is that I don't know exactly what it is, but you got to step on it and roll away and do it like you've done it before, because like you might as well have. And the only difference is like, you know, an hour <laughs> of, yeah. from now till till then. And you have five under your belt and then you put it and then, then you forget about it. Another thing is competing for so long, like I've made. I've made tricks that I had no business making. I've done a thousand times, like some of the easiest tricks in my arsenal go wrong and then you make them anyways. And, and it's the worst make and it's the most dangerous position you can get in, but you throw it down because you've done it before. And you can get away with so much like that if you have that 100% commitment. And so I'm thinking like, okay, if I've never done it before, usually it has to be a good attempt to even think about standing on it. Mm -hmm give it a good shot and stand on it. Like it's not, I try to dumb it down. Like I'm, yeah. I'm someone who can do this. Give it a good shot. Stand up. Mm -hmm. And that's like as, try as simple as I make it. Yeah. Because I've watched you on some of your, your skate comps before. I remember I was traveling somewhere to go speak at a, I think I was going to speak at a church in Texas somewhere. I maybe it was, I don't, it doesn't matter. But I remember um, your sister sending me um uh updates because i'm in an airplane unable to land i start all these <laughs> text updates because she knows i'd be very interested in how you're doing so i would log into the event and and watch what i could see and i remember watching you this was real time i remember watching you and and the camera's on you and you're a completely different mitchy yeah, it's not the Mitchie that I know. It's not the Mitchie that everybody follows everything else. It's like you were in this place. And I, I was well, I was wondering where you were when that was happening. It's like I remember you walked right by Tony Hawk. And even he's like patting you on the helmet, like, come on, you got this. And you were like, you weren't responding to any of the boys that were up on top of the ramp. And you just went and you and you stood there for a second and you didn't stand there incredibly long. You stood there, you stood there and you had your foot up you know, off the, off the ledge and, you know, you had mm -hmm. your back when you, you were, you were on the board, it was four or five seconds. And then you went, it was like, it was, it was kind of like you had already pre prepped for that. And it was really awesome to see that. I was just like, that's maturity. That's much, that's what, that's what maturity happens when you take a person who operates in a place of maturity and you put them under pressure, that's what you get. You get results. You, you don't know, get, you don't get procrastination. I like that. I've never heard pre prep before. Um, and, and I don't feel like that around people and it's very, and it's like a, it's been a confusing thing to manage, especially in my teens. Like, cause I would just like dip into these moments of like my eyes were laser beams all of a sudden mm -hmm. and like no one could get in front of me. It didn't really matter. And then I make my trick and then I kind of wake back up and it's normal again. And I didn't really get it. But um, that pre prep happens uh, mostly at night in my room. You know, I'm a note taker. I have my I have my notepad and it's quiet and I'm walking in circles in my room and I'm pretending I'm going to drop in. I'm I'm pretending that I'm in the air about to try this one trick and like taking stock with how I feel. And then okay, am I am I scared? Am I nervous? Am I shaky? What is what do I expect to go wrong? Like mm -hmm. just kind of letting all of that flow mm -hmm. and then just write down like once I figure out exactly what I need to do, I write it down till it's till it's subconscious, you know? 
Would you, can, would you, are you ever afraid? Well, let me, let, me, let me put this question this way. Have you ever experienced this place where you have to get, where you get to like a, a fork in the road, where you have to choose between being in fear or just being afraid, like a normal human emotion, but then fear is that thing that locks you up, seizes up everything about you. And you just like, you, you end up, you're just kind of sitting in a corner, just like rocking back and forth. just like, oh, you know, you just, you're, you're unable to move, right? That would be fear. But then afraid is that choice you make where there's still room for courage. Have you ever been in that place? Like in a, in a, it may not even be in a competition. It could be, you know, with your, your skydiving, cause you're a very accomplished skydiver and tunnel flyer. You're, and then you've been through some pretty interesting situations just in life as well, mm -hmm. right? Have you ever been to that place? You know, there's been a lot of times where the moment is just so much bigger than me that I had no business even caring. Like, for instance, like my first X Games or something like that. Come 13, 14, like I didn't get on the podium, but I didn't care. Like it wasn't like that was when I was afraid of yeah. competition. Like I'm here. <laughs> but there's moments that are like the 1260 is a great example of like being the most afraid I've ever been, but that's only because the moment was so big, but I was but I was taking it on, you know? So yes, like sometimes when you're just afraid, it's like, okay, do you even have any business being here then? And like, why are you, why are you doing this to yourself? So I think if you're in that position where like, you're that shell shocked, like maybe you, maybe you, you didn't prep right, or maybe you lied to yourself getting here and, you know, told yourself you were ready for something you weren't. Mm -hmm. Um, but those moments of the difference between being afraid and being in fear, I mean, being afraid is sort of necessary 100%. most of the time yeah you know like a healthy relationship yes with fear is the thing that you know that's what we're all doing that's what makes it what it is yeah yeah we it's a it's a i mean being afraid is a human emotion then there's room in there for courage and the other thing that i really like about what you've done with your career is that i think that a lot a lot of people don't realize that someone's potential is usually going to come with an expiration date. Mm -hmm. it, there's, it has a shelf life. And if you don't operate inside your potential, somewhere inside the confines of that ex expiration date, then you're going to deal with a bunch of regret because you didn't go and do what you were supposed to do. And here you are, 13 years old, saying things like, I really have no business being here. Well, I would beg to differ on that. I think you had every business be in there. I think that you were uh, you were probably ahead. You felt like you were ahead of yourself. Like, maybe I'm not ready for this. Maybe I am. It'll, you know, hey, we'll fix and find out. We're going to go. Uh, we're going to go after this and I'm going to give it everything that I have. But you are. But you were well inside the confines of your potential. Yeah. Then look where you are now to where you're able to do things that have gone even far beyond what people have been able to do in that sport for up until now. You know what you know what I mean? You're 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 I think you're in your time right now. It's a it's it's hard to know what's going on in real time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think as long as you have a good system that that you trust and you just I mean, looking around present moment is it's it just what happens is you get if you're lucky, you get slapped in the face of what's really going on mm -hmm. every once in a while. And it's like overwhelming and it's hard. And then you say, okay, this is where I am. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. Like When I'm 13 at those contests, like I didn't really have time to, I got invited. I'm going to accept it and I'm going to go try. And then that's when, you know, I do this 900 and then I lock in my spot at X games and then I can take a breath. But then I start making a plan like next year, like, all right, we're in this. Like, this is yeah. what. Like we're moving to California, like we're doing this now, you know, I get podiums, we grab sponsors and, and we keep it rolling. And that's when I think it just got like real. That's when that decision where discipline kind of became like the obvious choice because like, what are you going to, I'm just going to have to move back to Washington in two years if, if this doesn't work out. 
and that's going to be real awkward like trying to make the football team after missing middle school yeah. <laughs> you know like stuff like that that <laughs> yeah <laughs> So since um, since your last X Games appearance, mm -hmm. what has like what's like are there, are there more X Games coming up? Uh, oh. So just career wise, before we start doing going deep, right? Yep. Career wise, what's what's next? Where you at? Well, that came the last X Games was July, I believe. Got silver medal invert. They don't have a mega ramp event anymore. Uh, the owners changed and it is what it is really um yeah so so the vert contest i got second to jimmy wilkins who's an amazing who's an amazing skater um and honestly summer is busy with skating summer there's event after event and demos and you know then it's over and so filling the time in winter has always been a tough tough battle for me mm -hmm. you know I stay on my board, but like that's when I did a lot of skydiving or I play a lot of golf or I do these hobbies. Um, and this winter I'm going to Australia. Well, it's our winter, but going to Australia for nine weeks, 10 weeks tomorrow. Tomorrow. I leave tomorrow. Um, doing that's right. I remember we were setting this up. You're saying I'm not gonna be back till December. Doing uh a bunch of skate camps with kids and one-on-one -on -one coaching and you know some workshops at the vert ramps trying to trying to like teach some fundamental skills on the skateboard and um so you know that's kind of the rhythm right now and then summer will be coming i'll be doing skate camps and training and skating and do the load of contests and then you know that's about as far as i can really see well that's that's where we're yeah. at yeah that's that's awesome and uh i remember when um you know the first time i really got in introduced to skateboarding i was yeah you know, i was probably nine or ten years old myself and living in a farm out in the middle of nowhere and somewhere in central wisconsin wow yeah. on, on asphalt roads that have like big rocks <laughs> in them and stuff <laughs> i know the ones <laughs> where you where you run into the rock and then there's just a white street yes. in the road and you're like trying to and you're, clean your you're road off. up yep you're going a little faster than you probably should have and you got these little tiny wheels and these big rocks you know <laughs> yep and and uh we didn't have a vcr we had a little 12 inch black and white television and once about once a month my mom and dad would go and we would rent a vcr we rent some movies and i rented uh this movie called called police academy um i think it was like citizens on patrol or something like that <laughs> i'm watching it and i see this dude skateboarding towards a curb and he he in my mind right back then now yep. and ollie but he bunny hops up on the curb and then he just continues doing tricks down the block does big huge stuff did a bunch of just crazy I mean, for a, a midwest kid who loves skateboarding and watching him do that i was dude i didn't even watch the rest of the movie i grabbed my skateboard i'm back out there on that road I didn't know that. and i'm trying to figure out how he did that that's cool i didn't have anybody to coach me there was none of my friends that were into skateboarding nobody knew anything about it and that skateboard i still have today in fact my my 19 year old has it because he's very good at skateboarding i've seen the videos yeah you kid he's a good yeah he's, he's uh he's he's like i gotta work on my vert stuff you know and and but that saying he has that same deck still i am i and then he called me the other day and he had he met tony hawk oh wow you know just randomly or what? randomly oh, I, guess cool. at, I guess he was at a skate park or something like that and tony and tony just showed up you know and he was just like yeah this is this is awesome so yeah so it was my love for skateboarding is alive and well and ha and and then getting to know you and follow your career a little bit that's why i think it's it's so awesome that you're doing what you're doing with your skate iq because mm -hmm. that is something that so many kids because there are a lot of kids right now that are growing up without dads and there's something that i want you to take just just tuck in the back of your mind is that you're always going to be a dad to someone and there are all these people these kids out there that are that are they're dying for a dad and maybe they have a dad but maybe dad is he doesn't know anything about skateboarding he just wants the, the kid just needs a mentor someone that he can count on and even if it's not face to face because you have all these guys out there that are social media influencers but the lane you're going to live in mitchy is the impact lane impact happens at this range 
influence happens on the other end of one of these things. That that's where influence happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But impact, man, that's where I mean you're you haven't even begun in the the realm of impact with where with where you're going. So I wanted to uh I wanted to encourage encourage you uh with that. You know, and and I'd never really thought about the random skaters who don't know anything about it. And I think that's going to be a huge, I think they're going to benefit maybe the most, arguably. Um, but I have thought about how a lot, most people's parents don't have memories of skateboarding. They have memories of playing football under the lights or catching a baseball with their dad or, you know, swinging a golf club. Like these are the American memories that our parents have. Yeah. And, you know, long term, I just want to give some memories to kids so so skateboarding can grow and and flourish and like continue to live because skating has taught me so much like there's no reason that you know integrity and discipline and and mental health and physical health like they work great with skating like the skaters use the ones that are winning and the ones that are successful like they go to the gym and then they mm -hmm. go to sleep and then they go skate and they work on themselves and then they eat right. It's like, it's a bit of a sham what the industry standard is. And yeah. I just kind of shine a light on that. So talk to me about um, one of your biggest, one of your biggest passions has always, and especially recently has been the, in the area of, of, of mental health. Where did that come from? What happened? Walk, walk me, walk me through that as much as you, as much yeah. as you want to, as much as you can. I know you yeah. really have, you really love talking about it. Do that. Yeah. Um, passion's such a, it's such an odd way to put it. You know, I don't have a passion for eating right either, but like, I feel so bad if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of where. <laughs> I, I don't, um, Zach. Do you have a passion for eating right? <laughs> no, I hate. Bagels. So I asked him this morning. I'm like, "Hey, got coffee and bagels over there," and he's like, "I can't have either." And the 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 disparage, the, the, <laughs> yeah. the disparagement in his voice. Was, that was passion. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> uh, it's partly like if I stop showing up on time to like my from for my own for the things I set for myself, like whether it's therapy, acupuncture is a big one because that's basically therapy too. I just like talk the whole time, you know, talking to people, that's how it works for me. Mm. Um, and one of the hard truths is like most people around you aren't educated enough to just listen and not hold on to too much. So like talking to like third party therapist or a, a physical therapist or something of that sort has always been the best for me because I have like the freedom of like just a backboard to throw stuff off of and they don't like carry it with you the next day yeah. it's not like weird you know um but if I stop showing up to that and I stop writing's a big one for me just like scribble thoughts and feelings and whatever uh something as simple as that like I can get like a month and then I start to get really confused. And then I start to lose, like, the snowball is like, I have like, I have like three months. And then I feel horrible and I don't know where I'm going. And so mm -hmm. as, as someone who's like, I'm keen on my career, I'm keen on even pivoting careers. I'm, I, I want to be able to be there for people. Um, and, yeah, just keep showing up to those appointments. I know is at the fundamental level of being able to even be there for some or do the things that are important mm -hmm. and feel like I can get out of bed with some uh life force, you know? Yeah. I'm not just moping. I remember I was asked I I I, I texted you at one point and uh I was asking you a question about something. I don't even remember what it what what we were talking about. And I I couldn't get um I couldn't get a response out of you. For some reason I like I was not, and so I asked your sister. I was just like, "Hey, uh, is uh, is he okay?" And she was like, "Um, I think so. I don't really, I don't really know." I'm like, "Okay, well, I'm giving him space." And, yeah, you know. And then about probably six months later, you were right. Uh -huh. You're right back in there, right back in there in the comms. 
Um, and uh, I, I don't know, was that, was that a moment, were you going through something at that time that then was your epiphany that this is something that I'm going through, I'm going to deal with it. And then I think I need to take this message out to the world. You know, I, I started to realize that I had this like cycle of burnouts and, you know, sometimes it would, they just got longer and longer. Like I'd take a, I'd just check out for a few months mm -hmm. and like, I don't know what I was doing, but you know. I'm 17, 18, 19, and it's one month where, like, I don't touch my skateboard, I don't go outside, I don't I don't answer my phone, and I don't do anything. And then, like, whenever I'm ready, I just go back out, and I'll do it again. And, you know, I didn't know how to do anything sustainable. And it was one month, and then it was three months, and then it was six months, and then it was a year, and I'm like that's when I realized, like, hey, this, just, this one just isn't going to end unless I do something about it. Like I don't just depression. Yeah, just depression, anxiety, um, energy. Like I, I was not ready to fight an uphill battle. Like I, I could barely, I could barely do anything. Yeah, like, I could barely do anything. Um, and so that's when like I really made a choice. Like I'm just at least gonna figure out what's going on. Like I'm not gonna commit to like spending a bunch of energy on like accomplishing stuff but like i'm at least gonna figure out what the hell's going on mm. um and you know some of the fundamental things were like i didn't have any like i didn't have any loyalty to people you know like i remember i had a really tough relationship and i felt like i kept abandoning my friends like at a blink of an eye just like quickly i, w I was gone like, and then with skating, like, as soon as the contests were over, I, I didn't, I wouldn't show up to the ramp. And, like, friends that have been there for me, um, they were there for me, but, like, I've never had the chance to be there for them. And I kind of, like, started to realize all this stuff. Mm. Um, and so, like, some fundamental, like, consistency and, and being loyal to a few people that I trusted. Just the simple act of, like, checking on a few friends without them knowing I was checking on them. Like, it wasn't about me. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, did this go well? It's just something as simple as that. But, like, I know in my heart and I say, like, I would die for this person. You know, like, whatever they need, I'll show up. Mm. And that, like, that as a first step was, like, so I would recommend that as a first step for anyone. Yeah. If you I mean, you said something really interesting, you said that loyalty mm -hmm. is 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 something that 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 now I'm sure you look at loyalty and you say loyalty is 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 kind of a, a two way street. When I sense it, I'm going to give it also, mm -hmm. and that's human nature. Do you feel that you have more than five friends or fewer than five friends that you could go to and say anything to? Yeah, more than more than five. That's healthy. See, that was the number in the mid and early and mid eighties. The average man had approximately five other men that he could go and talk to about about anything, and people that he could go and talk to yep. about anything. Now it's it's below that number is below one for every dude. Yep, and that means. That there's a bunch of guys running around out there that are tribeless. And when you're tribeless, stand by. When you're a lone ranger, when you're by yourself and you're out there and bad happens, what is the result of, of pretty much anything bad that's going to happen if you don't have somebody you go and talk to? You know what I mean? Yeah, this like antisocial behavior is like really hot. It's really hot right now. Like I think yeah. a lot of men think it's like the epitome of manhood um just like go even google like what a lone wolf is like he's not with his pack because he's out looking for a mate and it's the hardest time of his life and then they find a new pack like that's it's not like the lone wolf is the tough cat that's running the no like he's gonna die if he doesn't find right. <laughs> another pack like right. it's it's pretty simple and i think the sad part is i thought it was like okay some people have people to talk to, and then, you know, half the people have someone, and half the people don't. Mm -hmm. It's like, if I have five or seven, and you have five or 10 or 15, like, 
that's really tipping the scale of like, oh, there's like 75% of people don't have anyone. Right. You know, it's like a really big yeah. problem. How many people, there has to be a ton of people that have zero. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's guys like us on this side that have a bunch. And I, and the thing is the guys I run with, the people I run with are all like us. Yeah. They all have a tribe mm -hmm. and we are each other's sounding board for so many i can i can think of a handful of people i can go to them with anything it doesn't matter how bad it is you could go to them zach has those people too that we talk we talk about it mm -hmm. about our 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 tribe our support unit um who, who's there with you when things are really are really bad and and i mean you're right there's <laughs> i never thought of it that way what's on the other side of the what's on the other side of the of the average yeah to create the average yeah mm. yeah that's uh that's that's no point you know i saw this thing on um i don't remember what i don't remember what show it was um and i wonder if we can if we can if we can find this at some point zach remind, remind me later but there was a pack of wildebeest that were uh that were kind of moving across the plane and a bunch of lions went in there and they found one that was kind of off to the side a little bit and they singled him out mm -hmm. and started taking him down. The rest of the wildebeest ran into the tree line and then the wildebeest decided that that wasn't happening on their watch. Yeah. And they came back out of the tree line, not just in a pack, but online. Yeah. It was a full oh. online assault. And they went running right at that wildebeest that was being killed by these lions. And they went, they, they just went right over him, ran the lions off. Then they came back to that one and you could see them literally trying to figure out how to help him up. Well, this guy got it back up to his feet and they surrounded him and they got him into the tree line with a few dudes around the outside, standing security, waiting for the lions to come back, daring the lions to come back, betting the lions that they wouldn't come back. And it was something super powerful. Uh, to see and it was just something that happened in nature and the decision making process that they went through a decision making process that so many people won't go through they won't go through that decision making process like i need that in my life i need a tribe like that i don't have anybody in my life that i can turn to when things get bad then what happens and i think that's one of the biggest things that happens with mental health because in mental health people feel by themselves they feel lonely and they feel singled out and depression sets in and they don't know who they can talk to and if they do they're exposing themselves and and they have trust issues because of something that maybe happened in their past. And all these things start to come in. There's this big, huge, I guess, reckoning of everything that you can possibly imagine bad in your life. And a lot of them probably aren't even the real bad things that happen. A lot of them are probably just something that you may be imagining or it's something that's not exactly real. And then it happens where it's it, it, it's, it starts to, and then all of a sudden one person shows up and says, hey, man, I got your back. Let's do this together. And they get in it with you and demonstrate a standard. Why don't we talk about it? Why don't we go see this person? Why don't we go deal with it this way in a healthy way? Like you said earlier, I don't remember if we were on camera or off, but you're like, communication is key. You got to talk about it. Yep. And these guys are coming back from overseas. These guys are coming back and they don't have that. They thought they did, but they don't. And they are they're they're dying at their own hand and it's happening time and time and time again i think the number was 22 people a day that were veterans were dying because of of what they had of the way that they perceived themselves post combat action and i think that number actually rose for a while i'm not sure where it's at right now i don't want to state anything that's not uh, a a a current fact or a truth but it's still an issue I mean, just in, I think it was this year inside of a month, there was like three or four guys that I knew that, that, that died at their, at their own hands. And it was when that happened where I remember thinking, I'm like, I got to get, I got to do a big one on, on this and, and stay in it for a minute. And I got to get Mitchy because I know that he's, he has, uh, uh, has done a lot of this and dealt with a lot of this and talked with a lot of people and has helped people through it. And, um, and when I was, and after your podcast dropped and I remember you came back to me and you said, man, the reaction, the reaction was huge. And, uh, um, and that was another thing that let me know. And I think that was even last year, Yeah, you know, and I, I remember just going, man, this is, this is a, this is a bigger, a bigger deal than everyone's giving it credit for because military guys don't want to talk about it because they're like, you were saying about the lone, lone wolf, you know, kind of goes out there, thinks he's tough, doesn't really hand, doesn't, doesn't not, he's not, you know, he, you can't do this on your own. You know, I, I, 
and can't speak on military mental health specifically. You know, I haven't lived anything like that. But I know that without a system, it, there's no chance. Like, you're not smarter than it. You're not going to figure it out. Like, when you don't know what to do, that's when you press the button that you start your plan. You know, mm -hmm. okay, these are the people that you call. I mean, you just go through the checklist. It's like, it's simple, simple to get your whole checklist right, top to bottom. Then think your first thought. Like, you're not going to win the battle from the depths. Like, I, I, I promise. Like, yeah, you know, and for me, it's it's as simple as like I I call these five people, I make these two appointments, I make sure my sleep and eating is good, and I go to the gym, and I do that for two weeks, and then you think your then you think your first thought because you know when you're not healthy, you're just you're not, and you can't, your brain isn't on your team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so having been through some of this stuff, when you like your first when when did you come to your realization that there was there was something here that we have to deal with? Like what what did that what did that look like? What did it what did it sound like in your when, head? Uh, when things were when I knew things when my reactions didn't match the situation, like uh, things were so much harder than what was presented in front of me. I had to take some self awareness to even realize that though. For yeah, right? I mean, so let's say self awareness in this situation is given. Like I'm, I'm, like I want to figure it out. Um, I understand, you know, the basics. Say I'm starting from that position, like you know, a conversation where like I need to set some boundaries, and I can't skate for a month, and I don't know what to eat, and I can't go to sleep, and I scared to close my eyes because then I think about the things that exactly I don't want to think about. And I like the spiral just would happen at a blink of an eye. Mm. Um, and so like something was like, I was sick. Like something was wrong. Like I, you know, wake up crying, like, ha like almost the water would beat the eyes open, you know, like it was just, I was sick. You know, and so it was, it was clear to me. Yeah. Yeah. I have actually been sitting in a closet <clears throat> with a pistol in my mouth, taking the slack out of the trigger, literally milliseconds from dying. And what kept me from doing that was a, a few things. One, it was, I almost felt like I, I felt in, in my gut the the it was like the the voice of god saying there is so much more that you have to do here before you leave so who are you to make that decision and then seeing the in my mind seeing my kids and you know at the time i had three now we have four um seeing three three of my my babies and they were still fairly young at that time and it was a really, really rough time. And I remember the first thing I thought was like, I got to call, I got to call Greg. And he was the one guy at the time that I had where I could call and I could tell him anything. And he was, he was my, my pastor. He was a dad to me. He was just so many things. And so I remember when I made that decision, he, he the, one of the first things he said to me was, you need to have a series of people who have gone before you in life that you can call on that are going to be able to point you in a cardinal direction. It's going to be on you to figure out where your feet go mm -hmm. and how fast your feet go, but to point you in that cardinal direction. And that was the one thing. It's so it's, it's, it's not the one thing it's, it's in essence what you were saying. It's yeah. like it was, it was people and it wasn't going to happen on my own. Mm -hmm. And I remember having to be told what to think for a minute because depression had taken over my life. I had to be told, Hey, listen, you don't have the facilities to do this on your own. You're going to have to hear what I have to say. Just do what I tell you to do. Do you trust me, Bram? Do you trust me? I said, yeah, I do. Yes, sir. And he said, okay, just do this. And it saved my life. It saved my life. And that's, to me, mental health is one of those big things. And it's not like I was out, it was like some of these kids today, 
in combat ops doing crazy insane stuff that is that is going to forever haunt them i didn't have that military experience mine was significantly different but still i had the the pressures and the coming home and you know going out and doing dangerous stuff and 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 then and then be but now having these i have five guys in my life and every one of them is a dad to me they've been in business longer than me they've been in ministry or speaking longer than i have They've been a husband and a father longer than I have. And so I come across any situation. I have five guys that love me enough to tell me the hard truth and say, hey, listen, this is I'm, I'm telling you this because I love you. But you're you're over here. You're kind of like messing that up over here. You're getting a little bit soft. You need to t- toughen up a little bit over here. Over here, you need to do this a little different. That need, and and they, they are very blunt with me. And I love that, even though I'm a middle aged guy, I got these guys who are in their 70s and 80s and they're they're poking me in the chest once in a while saying, do better, do better. And I respond to that. Some people don't respond to that. Some people respond differently. Well, you were born wanting it from a certain set of people. Mm -hmm. You know, there's these primal relationships that would be so nice if those were the ones, you know, if those were the ones that poked you just right. But like the truth is like a lot of people don't have it. Most people don't have that. Yeah. And like, it's not up to you where it comes from, but like, it's up to you to listen to it when mm-hmm. it does. Like you can easily talk yourself out of good advice because it wasn't your girlfriend that's abusive or it wasn't your, you know, your deadbeat dad or it wasn't, you know, like you're, you can be mad about those things or you, you can just listen when it comes and, mm-hmm. and build off of that. Um, yeah. and, and the other thing that I wanted to definitely ask you was that cardinal direction, you know, so much of this comes back to accountability and taking responsibility for where, you know, you can be or what you can be. It's not always easy where to know where, but like how much has your own ideal, like your own best version of yourself, um, how much of that has been like what? you just lean on when you're confused um how much is has um say that say that again say one more time you have like your own version of yourself in your head that's like the best version of you and like no even if you don't know what it is you need to do like that that version of myself has always been like something i really lean on to at least not move away from that yeah um, for me, and one of the things I had to learn, and I had to learn this over and over and over, <laughs> I learned lessons the hard way by getting punched in the face. You know, I might have a plan, but like Tyson says, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. I kept getting punched in the face. And, you know, I learned really quick not to lean on my own understanding. You know, I was, I was, I had it figured out. I was going to do it my way. It just didn't, it just didn't work like that, you know? And um, you know, the Bible even says that it says lean not on your own understanding and to place your trust in you're almost doing it. You're placing your trust in something you can't see, hear, touch, feel. I mean, it's it's this this thing. But the but the more that you ha- that that you start to operate from a position of faith, the more your faith grows. And when your faith grows, now you start to respond to things different. And it has been this whole journey of that. And it has come to the place where I had to kind of, after, after a while, step outside of myself, understand, take or just, just take inventory, stop, turn around, and look at the road I just traveled. This road I just traveled was really hard, but it's going to look kind of like a straight line just because I can look right down, but I can see where all the decisions that happened that brought me to where I am now. And then I turn around and I'm look, okay, so here's my cardinal direction I was told to go. Well, the Bible says that the footsteps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. So now it's up to you to be able to learn how to hear God. And that voice is still weird because it doesn't, it sounds a lot like your own voice. Well, do you trust your own voice? Just the your best version of yourself, right? What you were just saying. So then I start looking at myself, what does it look like on the other side of me? Like right now, right here, like what, what is it, what does it feel like to be you sitting here talking to me? Like, I don't know what that's like. I only know what it's like on the other side of you. You know, one of my first mentors, Rodney Mullen in skateboarding, you might know that name, Mm -hmm. godfather of, you know, most of the tricks. Um, And something he said so beautifully to like a nine-year-old. That was like, hey, if if what you're doing, 
what you feel like you're doing and what it looks like you're doing, like, if you can make those the same thing, you win. Like, you you won. As close mm-hmm. as you can get those things, like, that's the that's the battle for, you know, and that comes with humility and that comes with honesty and that comes with, like, a lot of things. But something so simple like that has been... You know, like you can't lie. Like if any of those get off, you're in bad shape. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're trying to seem like you're doing something you're not, or it looks different than what it is, it's yeah. And that's where you start getting into a lie. You know, where it's yeah. like, well, how do you fix a lie? Well, you got to tell a lie again. You know, <laughs> it gets really uncomfortable Definitely after a while. Lie again. I have been there so many times. Double down. Oh man, I have. I have had. Oh crazy <laughs> amounts of just i'll ask off camera yeah <laughs> Dude, i got stories for days <laughs> for days and the thing is like i step in front of arenas full of people and and just just start throwing my dirty laundry oh. basket all over the floor you know they're like really you're talking about that it's easier to be uh, honest than yeah that. i don't have many skeletons in the closet because i just get up there and just talk about it because i can use me as the best example of what not to do <laughs> But man, Mitchie, I gotta say, I I am having a blast with you. I almost don't want it to end, but uh, went by so fast. We're at the end. We're at the end of our time, and I want to honor your day because I know you're traveling yep. like tomorrow. Big trip tomorrow. Yeah, and you got some packing to do and everything else. But um, um, final thoughts, man. What do you got? You know, I just really think it's hard to step into the world of of. You know, you when you want to be when you are a leader, doing it in new ways is always hard because it feels a lot like look at me. Uh, but yeah. you know, from my perspective and the people watching, like from you're here for them. Like, like you could care less about a little bit more attention or the income from a podcast, or you know, like you're here for the people that listen, that tune in, and like reach out to you know reaching out to you as a viewer or as me is like 100 percent acceptable and that's real yeah. you know and and i hope that's obvious to the people listening and watching i learn a lot every time i get to sit down with you and you know we'll do another one of these at some time in the future I'd love we'll, to. yeah because you're so fun to talk to and you're so easy to talk to Thank for you. And such an accomplished young man with so much coming up for you. I'm so excited for what for what life's gonna bring your way. And um and you're 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 heading overseas. You're gonna be going yep. to Australia with yep. Gate IQ, you're gonna be doing a bunch of uh stuff over there. So for anybody that may be in Australia, they can they can find out where you're gonna be on your website. Your schedule's yep. pretty much there, right? Yep, all on the website. Yep. And you know, something that runs parallel to kind of like what you do when you're speaking, like there's not a lot of that for kids and definitely not in for skateboarding. Yeah. And like, you know, if the parents can get something out of it and the kids have the same thing in a language they understand, man, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, where can people find you? Um, so skate IQ, Mitchy Brusco on in, you know, you can Google Mitchy Brusco and you'll find yeah. whatever you need. <laughs> you're, you're out there. Isn't it? Yeah. It's you get, Mitchy Brewster on the Googler. It's getting to the point where you can find me. You'll, the auto search will start to kick in pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah. Uh, but Mitchy, cause who's called Mitchy? Yeah, that's Mitchy, point. you get to Mitchy, and you enter B, it autofills. Yep, there we go. But um, yeah, Instagram, Mitchy Brusco eighty four. Instagram is a huge skate platform. Yep. You know, a lot of skate videos on there, and I'm open to DMs and voice messages and whatever. Like I, I still respond to everything and see that's everything. Awesome. So that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for being here, man. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All right. Cool. Ram Radio.